Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, not too long ago, we did an episode that talked about the zero width space. Essentially, it's an invisible space that you can put inside text. One part of the discussion there was how you could use that to make things look one way, but in fact, have it actually be something else. This led to an interesting discussion between myself and a YouTube user called Tan Trung. Essentially, we were talking about URLs and how we could actually use this sort of thing to abuse it. Now, this led me down the rabbit hole of this thing called Punicode, which is essentially our topic for the day. But before we go there, let's first talk about a homograph attack, which is a great way to summarize essentially what's going on here. Now, a homograph to oversimplify basically means two strings that look the same to you, but are actually different. So a homograph attack essentially involves using that to trick people. One very simple example of this is that, well, Unicode has a lot of symbols that look identical to each other, or at least very similar. And if you can exploit that, well, you can do a lot of things. One example of this would be this URL. Now, it looks exactly like google.com, right? But the two O's have actually been replaced with a different character from the Unicode set. Instead of being O's, these are actually Greek Omicron characters. So it's actually a completely different character. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this URL and attempt to browse to it in my browser. Watch what happens. Look what it has transformed to. This allows us to very nicely transition to our next point. Long story short, we want our URLs to basically only contain ASCII characters. What that means, of course, is that you don't have the full expressiveness of Unicode, right? You can basically only you know, work with a very limited character set. One way we can work around this in order to display Unicode characters is to simply substitute a Unicode character for a string of ASCII characters. And essentially, that is what you are seeing. It has a name, this is called Punicode, and the idea is that the missing characters, as you can see, are taken out and are represented at the back of the string after you know a separator, which is a dash. In order to visually say that this is a Punicode encoded URL, this little prefix is added to the front as well. So yeah, that's basically an ASCII-friendly substitution of our Unicode URL. As you can imagine, a Punicoded URL isn't particularly pretty or readable. But thankfully, it's not too difficult for a browser to recognize that, well, a URL is indeed Punicoded, and to reverse the process. In doing so, reconstructing a nice, readable URL. But here's the problem, and here's where things get weird. Because what you can do is, you can actually register a domain that looks like the Punicode encoding. When you put that into a browser that translates that back, well, now you are doing some hardcore URL spoofing. There is actually a proof of concept of this, and I'll link it in the video description. But essentially, a researcher by the name of Zheng Shutong has actually found a way to yeah, exploit this. They bought a URL that translates to apple.com. And if you go to the link in the video description, you'll be able to see it in action. Now, certain browsers already have safeguards against this, so if you're using Chrome, you will not see it happen. But this applies to even the latest version of Firefox. There's a lot more you can read about this particular exploit, but long story short, it's not really possible to, you know, guard against this problem. The easy way out is to just stop Punicode from working altogether. That means we don't do the translation at all. Right? If it has that you know, XN thing, just leave it there. Well, sure, you can do that, but it impacts usability. So let's say we don't do that, we choose to keep Punicode around. Then we have to have some way of deciding when we should translate it and when we shouldn't, when we should leave it at that you know, state so it can actually serve as a red flag to the user. And that's not easy because you have to think about that on a case-by-case -case basis. So yeah, we're kind of stuck. This is not an easy problem to have to deal with. So yeah, I'll leave things here, right? You can pop open the video description to see more related resources. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, 
You're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment, and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.